10 Essentials for Musicians Labeling Harmony Chord Charts We've covered musical notation of pitch and rhythm, both traditional and non-traditional, so now it's time to move on to harmony. So let's talk about chords. Chords are the vertical sonorities created when two or more pitches sound together. Yes, in Western music, the first thing most of us hear is the melody. But we are using chords with it almost all the time. Some of those combinations sound terrible together, like this. Some sound very pleasant. Some sound more empty. Others sound quite full. Some sound more happy somehow. Some sound more sad. Some work better in one key than another. In fact, the chords help to shape the key of the song. Do you know that virtually every combination of pitches that comes up with any regularity in music has a label? Two notes, three notes, four, five notes. With any random addition, it seems, someone has thought of a label for that chord. However, to make things simple, we're going to point out that the vast majority of chords are made up of three notes or four notes the stacked in thirds. So for right now, we don't need to worry about how the chord is created. For now, we're just learning the labels. So here we go. Every chord has a root. Usually it's the bass note that we call and we name the chord after it. So that's the first part of the chord's name, a C, a B flat, an F sharp, an A. This is the primary identifier, the root of the chord. So that's the name, that's the letter name of the note. You know that you have the chord in root position because the notes will stack on consecutive lines or consecutive spaces so we invert or move the notes around until they line up properly. They call these pitches the root, the third, and the fifth. Again, we're not concerned about this just yet. Now we're able to confirm that the bass note, in fact, is the name of the chord, the pitch of record, if this were a chord of law, because they stack in thirds on consecutive lines or spaces when it's written out. So now that we've stacked the notes like that, we get to the next part of the name of the chord, and that's whether it's major or minor. So that next note up when they are stacked in consecutive thirds or spaces or lines is, is the third. Most often that pitch is two whole steps up just like it would be with a major scale. Four half steps is the same as two whole steps. Okay, and they call that a major third, and therefore they call this chord a major chord, which is so common that it needs no further label. So what could be more simple? Here's a C chord, here's an F, there's a G. Simple one letter label is sufficient for more than half of the chords that you'll see in contemporary pop music. I did a little study, and 60% of the CCLI Top 20 in 2016 were just a simple chord name of one letter. But wait, just when I start to be able to predict it all, it gets a little bit more confusing. So let's try doing this with a D. That was a C. Here's a D. It's a D chord, but if you look carefully at the distance between the notes, you'll see that that first third is only one, two, three half steps above the root and not four. It sounds too different too, doesn't it? Yeah, they, they call that interval a minor third. That was a C major chord. That's a D minor chord. So we then need to clarify. You can't just call it a D. D would imply a D major. We have a minor chord, so we call it D, M-I-N, lowercase, or it's simply a lowercase m. Same experience with an A or an E in the key of C. So now we have A minor, E minor, we have C, F, G, D, 
minor, E minor, A minor. That's six chords in the key of C. That's almost all the chords. And about 10% of the chords in contemporary worship music are minor chords. So we've got 60% that are major and 10% are minor. So 70% of the chords that you're going to find are one or the other, and uh, we've got a label for all of them, either a major or a minor chord. Only thing that we need to know right now is that sometimes there's a fourth note in the chord. It's almost always an added note on top of the triad. So we start with a simple triad, and then we add a fourth note. And most often, it stacks another third above. So you have a major seven, you have a seven, you have a minor seven. In any case, it's something that causes us to put a, the number seven because there's the root, it's a seventh above the root. We don't need to worry too much about that except to know that there are seventh chords. So sometimes you have a E minor seven, an A minor seven, a D minor seven, which would be simply an E M seven, A M seven, D M seven. Notice in all these cases that the seventh is actually a whole step below the root. And that's important eventually. 80% of the chords that you'll ever see. By the way, another 10% of the chords are slash chords, which means that it's a normal chord, but the bass note is something that's not the root of the chord. These are more complicated to figure out, but really quite simple to read. So if you add those chords to the pile, then really we've covered 90% of the chords that you'll ever see just in this short video. Think you can pass a quiz on this? Go ahead and take the quiz and see how you do.